Hi everyone! So, as most of you already know, I have a master's degree in photography and that means I get asked quite a lot about cameras and camera settings and things like that. So I thought I'd make a video about manual settings on cameras just to help people out. Today I'm just going to go over the three main settings, so that's ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And these three things will really help you take better photographs. And once you learn the ISO, aperture and shutter speed, a lot of other things will start to make sense. And even my other tutorials that I've done on this channel will be a lot easier to understand. In fact, now that I think about it, I should have probably filmed this video a year ago before I filmed all my other tutorials, but there you go. So that's enough rambling, let's get started. Whatever camera you have, it is basically a box that records light. And when I talk about ISO, aperture and shutter speed, they are all going to affect the amount of light that goes into the camera and they all will affect the image in a slightly different way. And the key to getting really good photographs is figuring out how to get the right effect that you want while also figuring out how to get the right amount of light to compensate for that. If you let in too much light, your image is going to be overexposed, and if you let in too little light, your image is going to be underexposed. I'm going to start out by talking about ISO because that is so easy. ISO is basically the camera's sensitivity to light. So the darker the location that you're taking the photograph in, the higher the ISO should be. It's really that simple. For example, if you're outdoors on a bright and sunny day, try ISO 100. And if you're in a dark room and you don't want to use the flash, then try ISO 1600. Keep in mind that the higher the setting, the more grainy the image is going to be. So do use this wisely. If you want to play around with this for yourself, try using the program mode. On most cameras you can do this by turning the dial to P. This will allow you to change the ISO, but the camera will figure out the best aperture and shutter speed for you. Next we're going to move on to aperture. You know those portraits that you see with the really nice background blur? That's all to do with aperture. When it's set to a small number, this will let in more light into the image and actually make the focus softer. For example, I'm actually filming this video that you're watching right now with the aperture set on f2.8. That's why the background looks a little bit blurry behind me and it's had a really nice effect on my fairy lights. Using a wide aperture is absolutely perfect for videos or for portraits or for doing product shots for your blog or images taken in low light as they will let more light into the camera. Higher apertures like f8 and above are more ideal if you're doing something where you want the entire image to be in focus, for example landscape photography. Higher apertures are also ideal when you're outside in bright light as it lets less light into the camera. To try out this setting for yourself you can use the aperture priority setting on your camera. On most models this will be A or AV on the dial. When you're on this setting it means that you can adjust the aperture to whatever you want and the camera will automatically decide a good shutter speed to go along with that. If you're using a wide aperture then you'll be letting in more light so try to use a lower ISO to compensate for that. And if you're using a very high aperture you'll obviously be letting in less light so you'll want a higher ISO. So now we're on to the final manual setting that I'm going to talk you through today and that's shutter speed. The shutter speed is how long the shutter on a camera is open for. A short shutter speed will only be open for a fraction of a second and that will give you a really still frozen image. So these are really good if you're photographing anything that moves quite quickly such as a child or a pet or if you're documenting some kind of sporting event for example. A shorter shutter speed will also let less light into the camera. Gosh, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? So it's ideal for being outdoors, for being in bright light, or for times when you want to use a really wide aperture. Longer shutter speeds are going to let more light into the image and also more movement. So if you have quite a long shutter speed, you could potentially have quite a shaky or blurry image if you don't put the camera on a tripod. I actually experimented with shutter speed quite a lot last year when I did a photo shoot. So for that photo shoot, I wanted to capture my head moving from side to side. I adjusted the shutter speed until I got the desired amount of movement within the image because I wanted quite a nice blur. So when I was taking the picture I just kept slowing down the shutter speed until I got exactly the look that I was going for. The longer the shutter speed the more motion blur I would get in an image like this. To try this out for yourself go to the shutter priority mode on your camera from there you can play around with the settings and see all the different results that you get for yourself. As I said in the introduction, a good photograph starts with all three of these settings. 
because you need to know all three of them to get the effects that you want while still making sure that you get the correct exposure on your image. For example, you might want to take a portrait with a really beautiful background blur, so you need to use a wide aperture, but you need to compensate for that by having a lower ISO and a higher shutter speed because the camera is going to be letting in more light with that wide aperture. So the reason I wanted to do a video where I explain all three is because you need to use all three of them together to get the picture that you want. If you want to play around with all three of these settings at the same time, you can use the manual mode on your camera. From there, you can have a little play around with everything and just see how light changes when you change one setting. Your camera will have a little exposure guide on it so that you can see whether your image is going to be too light or too dark. If the scale is too far to the left, then your image is going to be underexposed, and if your scale is too far to the right, it's going to be overexposed. So you want to get it right in the middle. So when you're adjusting your settings on the manual mode, make sure that the exposure guide is always in the middle. And that's everything, so I hope that your camera looks a little bit less scary now that you've learned all this. I know that when I first started to learn photography when I was a teenager, all this technical stuff was quite overwhelming at first, but the trick is to just keep practicing, keep taking pictures, and eventually it all does start to sink in, I promise. If you're still confused, if there's anything that doesn't make any sense, or if you have any other questions, then please let me know in the comments below because I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Also, let me know what photography and filming tutorials you want to see because all of my tutorials are actually made on request. So if there's something that you need help with, then please let me know. And if lots of you ask for the same video, then I will make it. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up so I know. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. I make new videos every Friday at 6pm. So I'll see you next week. Bye!